Hey everybody, welcome back to Kindred Spirits on the Roof. Last time we got through Miu's extra scenes and those were very enjoyable. And today I would like to go through Miki's extra scenes. And this one seems especially intriguing to me because it looks like we're starting uh, when Miki reads Sena's love letter and I'm very interested to know what her her perspective is because we know that we know from going through the main story that Miki is very self-aware of her feelings but she's not always acting honestly in them so I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see what her what her initial reactions were to Sena's love letter even though we already know like we kind of know how she thinks about it, or we only know what she thinks about it based on what she told Sena back in the beginning of this. So, I'm looking forward to it. I looked right, looked left, looked up at the ceiling, and finally looked down. And then... I tried to force the breaths bursting out of my chest to leave quietly, but I wasn't having a lot of luck. How could I? I mean, this is... It's... I'd finished my work with the beautification committee, and for once, nothing else, and returned to my classroom to head home, when I'd noticed something odd about my bag. I'd gotten a little nervous. I wondered if someone had played some prank on me. But this... This... The thing that was inside my bag... It was a rather plain envelope the quality of which I noticed before anything like a cute design. It was addressed to me. At first I was suspicious of it, but when I looked over the envelope and the contents of the stationery inside it, my cheeks immediately grew hot. Even in just two or three lines, the writer's heartfelt intent had come through. But I read the letter over again, wondering if I'd misunderstood something, and then... My heart started pounding uncontrollably. I mean, this is probably... No, I'm sure it's... I was so bewildered that each letter seemed to dance in front of my eyes on the page. Something like a love letter. On the surface of my mind, I managed to think such calm thoughts as... How serious and charming it is to handwrite a letter these days instead of texting. And that's quite nice. But the rest of me was incredibly, incredibly confused. I mean, it's only natural, right? I've never received anything like this before. I recognize the name of the sender. I've always been pretty talented at remembering people's names and faces. But this was... This girl was... A new student I'd found lost in the school during the first week. I remember showing her around then. I only met her that one time, spoke to her just that one time. And yet she... Huh? Huh? What should I do? What do you do about this sort of thing? The fact of the matter is that she's attending the school, meaning obviously she's a girl. In other words, the first love letter I've ever received came from an underclassman of the same sex? Really? I... I have to calm down. I felt my face heating up again as I read over the words once more. Yet, yes, she wants me to meet so she can thank me one more time. That's it, right? Summarizing the letter brought me to that conclusion. It can't exactly be called a love letter if she just wants to thank me, not confess her love or anything like that, right? I understood that intellectually, but... I looked to my left and my right again, checking my surroundings, thankful that club activities had mostly ended and there were no prying eyes to see me. That was why I was able to keep standing there reading over the letter again and again, reading it so many times I wondered if the sweat on my hands would stain the paper. Ihara-san, it's time to go home soon. You're done with your committee work, right? I 
I thought my heart might stop when I heard a voice from the hallway. I'm sure I already looked plenty suspicious, and the only reason I hadn't shouted aloud was that I'd been so shocked my reflexes hadn't been able to keep up. Go home before it gets dark, okay? I know the days are getting long now, but you shouldn't stay too late. Y yes I hid the letter out of Sono Sensei's view and stuffed it into my bag and then flew out of the classroom. Quick, but not actually running. Yeah, I don't know if we've ever seen that transition before, like the sliding out of the screen. We usually see like the fade or not the fade out, but like the blurring image when characters are rushing around. Maybe that symbolizes that Miki was moving slower than that, or something like that. Oh, you don't need to hurry that much. Uh, no, um, go goodbye. R right. Be careful on your way home, okay? Y yes I Harasan? Sono Sensei watched me dubiously as I left, so flustered I must have looked like an idiot. I rushed past so quickly I couldn't quite see her face, and I hope she didn't see mine. Yeah, we've never seen Tsukio and Miki interact before. Um, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about that. It's just, it just was a new interaction. And I like that. I like seeing these characters have more diverse interactions with each other. It kind of pulls the story together, kind of makes the world feel a little more full and real instead of things happening in a void, you know. I ran into the bathroom, flew into a stall, and when I was finally alone again, <sighs> no matter how many times I read it, I couldn't stop feeling shocked. My heart pounded, my face flushed, and in the end, I almost felt like crying. It was the same as when I read it back in the classroom. The letter only said that she wanted to meet me one more time. That was all it said, and yet... The mood painted by the letter's contents seemed to indicate to me, from my common sense, this is a love letter. But why? Why? We only met one time. So why, Maki-san? I whispered her name deep inside my heart. Just that was enough to get the corners of my eyes feeling hot. Only it wasn't from happiness or anything nice like that. It almost felt like I wanted to condemn her. How could you write something so earnest, so frank, so heartfelt? I just showed you around the school a little. I didn't even help you carry your things, and we had to stop so many times because of me. Thank you for being kind to me. I was so happy. I only did what was natural. That's all it was for me. I mean, what would you think of me if I had just left you there lost? It's only because I pictured that. We never even met, and I was thinking something like that. The feelings inside me were thrown into stark relief by the letter. I was even thinking those things about the sender of this incredibly earnest letter. But for a moment, I wondered. Would I have been so shaken had it come from someone else? Maki-san, she was so full of energy so lively, not frustrated at all even though she was lost. It felt like she put me in a better mood just by being with her for a little while. Oh, this is so cute. Sorry, I, it's hard for me right now to kind of read this seriously just because I'm, I'm really, like I really have grown to like Miki and Sena as characters in their relationship. And this, this really just adds more to my enthusiasm for them. I mean, considering how I felt about them in the beginning, I didn't like them at all. But now I think they're, they are one of my favorite relationships in this game. And 
and I think it has a lot to do with just how uh, how much development we see we see from them as characters through the course of their relationship in the main story, and this is just added added fleshing out for them, right? And and to see Miki kind of stress about what Sena would think of her and how she's frustrated because she doesn't know how she feels, but she also doesn't like the idea of rejecting people and turning them away. Um, but she still kind of likes Sena a bit too, so she knows that much. She just doesn't really know if her feelings go deep enough, and this is just really... It's really emotional, and it's very good and in character, and it makes me very happy. And I can't explain it beyond that, but so excuse me for that last read. I just I was overcome with uh, with excitement for this and feeling. Am I so shaken by this letter because it came from a girl like her? These straightforward, honest words of thanks. I calm the emotions swirling in my breast and shut them away. And I read the letter one more time. I want to see you again on the roof after school this Thursday. I read over the words near the ending again one more time. If I go to see her, what does this first year plan to say to me? If this isn't a love letter, then she probably really does just want to thank me again. But if it is, if it really is, will she confess her love to me? Either way, when I hear her words, I'm positive Maki-san and I will be brought closer in some way. And I am very interested in that. What will she tell me with those bright, honest eyes and words of hers? I don't know yet. I don't know how I should respond to her. But I'm sure the words she has to say are affectionate ones. Words she wants to say to me so that we can grow closer. It said so in the letter. She wants to know more about me. Oh, that's so telling. And that's so good because we know from the main story that that Miki really wanted someone to ask her. I forget like the specifics of it, but I remember her telling Yuna, and she tells Sena this too eventually, right? That she wanted someone to ask her about her own feelings. And and so it it makes a lot of sense that Miki would, would, for lack of a better phrase, would jump on the opportunity to like bond with someone who would be interested in being closer with her and who might potentially uh, ask her about her feelings and Miki might be able to express them honestly with her about like why she does what she does. And that's, yeah, I just, that's like a really good, like that feels very relatable and it feels very realistic like I I feel like Miki especially she feels like a real person to me and that's one of the things I think makes me like her so much at this point so very very good game very good it was for it was with admi admiration for the person who wanted to know more about me and hope I I'm hopeful about this first year I've only just met. Thinking that makes me feel a little pathetic. I want this first year, who I've only seen once, who was impressed by my kindness, to understand the feelings I have hiding in my heart, the ones I've never shown to anyone else. I'm hoping for that. But I will probably, no, surely, go to the roof on Thursday. And I want to hear Maki-san's words. I will probably accept them no matter what they are. Even if it's impossible to accept them all, I don't think I'll be able to deny them either. That might make Maki-san feel bad, though. Uh, I'm thinking that again, but... 
I honestly want to see her. To see Maki-san. It's true that I feel this way. I'm certain that I admire her honesty. I want to hear what she has to say to me, her words for me. Yes, I do think that, and I don't want to be so negative anymore. I quietly slid the letter into my bag. Now I need to meet with her. I can think about the rest after I hear what she has to say, and I can come up with my response. I just need to calm down for now. I need to make a decision that won't hurt her, and won't hurt me either. But I don't know if I'll be so determined when I meet her in person again. With that uncertain thought, I watched the setting sun outside. So the saint has, so the saint is human. She very much is. So is that it for Nikki? Again, you guys have to just bear with me since I don't, I'm not really sure how all these extra scenes go. Though I'm very sad if that's the only Miki extra scene we get. Oh yes, I, okay, so I, I cannot wait. You guys know about, you guys know from the Miu, uh, from the Miu extra scenes that I love the idea of Miki and Miu being friends, so. Oh, I'm so, I'm excited for this. This happens all the time. Someone asks me to do something, and when I'm heading back to my classroom afterward, someone else asks me to do something else, and it's usually another delivery. Today is actually a lighter day, since I don't have favors upon favors upon favors to take care of. Though this is a little... Mm, I got a better grip on the box in my hands before it could slip free, but then its contents threatened to spill out because of their weight. The box was full of biology printouts, and the wood-free paper they used was much heavier than I was used to. Taking them to the second floor was, well, the same sort of thing I always do, but I was less and less sure I could handle the weight of everything. When I started feeling despondent and pondered setting the box down to take a break, the weight suddenly lifted. I'll help, Miki. I looked up, realizing that someone had picked up the other end of the box and found a familiar face. Miu, oh, you don't have to. I can carry it. I wouldn't bluff if I were you. This is pretty heavy. It'd be hard for someone on an athletic team to carry this alone, I think. Her hands holding the box were steady, and I didn't think she'd let go even if I told her I could do it by myself, and doing it together would be much easier. Miu, she's been a classmate since last year, and she's someone I can honestly call a friend. Oh, yes. I mean, it doesn't really seem like you two are that close back in the Miu extra scenes, but I I like this. I like I want to believe in this friendship, so more power to you. Go forth and be friends and allies. Where are we taking this? The preparation room for the first science room. Uh, the preparation room by the first science room on the second floor. You wouldn't mind helping? Of course not. I shifted over a little of the box's weight to Miu. This is enough, right? Miu's been considerate to me like this since we were second years. And that's not all. I think she's thrown at least a little of my inner feelings. Though, it's hard to say how much. It's been the same ever since we became friends. She understands what's in my heart and worries about me. I wonder if that's why. Why I pay a little more attention to her than to other people. You could even say I watch her. 
It's the same as always, huh? You're not taking biology, right, Miki? Yet you're doing this. Mm, but it's the same as always. You're the same as always too, aren't you, Miu? Though you seem to be in a good mood. I wonder if that's why. It looks that way to me. Her face right before mine, over the box between us. Her breathing, her voice, her gait. It all seems more cheerful than usual. I wonder if Miki's own self-awareness is what makes her so observant and in tune with other people's feelings. Cause that's not that's not a usual like that's not a common trait. I feel in most people uh, to be so so uh, observant of people. Though maybe she's just super observant of Miu because she because she likes Miu. <laughs> Miu throwing the smackdown. You can't change the subject like that, Miki. You look tired. Ah, uh, I thought she'd notice. Miu's that kind of person though. I was only half trying to change the subject. The other half of me really thought that. She's one of the top sprinters in the country, and the vice captain of our track and field team. She even does the training programs for their team instead of Matsuri, their captain, I think. She's like the coach. It's just like Miu. Sometimes I think she's more suited to looking after other people than looking after herself. She's cool and collected, good at observation and analysis. Come to think of it, I think she was in fretting about improving her track times recently. Is that why she's been down? No, I shouldn't ask that. She probably doesn't want me to ask, like I don't want her to ask. We understand this about each other. Me is the type that won't coddle someone if they don't want it. So, as long as I do the same with her, she won't pry. Even if our personalities and ways of thinking are different, we have that in common. Would you say our commonality is that we're both worry warts and that we both avoid relying on other people? In my case, that's just because I'm bad at it, though. Yeah, no, me is just stubborn as hell. <laughs> ah, is that why I can be friends with her? Even when we don't have a box in the way, I think we interact with an unspoken bit of distance between each other. Yes, close the distance, please. I, I would love for them at some point, and I don't know if we'll get it in the next scenes, but I'd love for them to just be honest with one another as friends. I'd... I could not describe how badly I want that since the Miu extra scenes, and I didn't even realize it's what I needed in my life until then. And now I just hope we get that somewhere down the line. Well, I'm sure that. Well, I'm sure the same goes for both of us. There's nothing we can really do about that. And it's because I'm talking to Miu that I could say something close to what I'm really thinking. You might be right. I suppose the two of us go to all this trouble because we want to. Could be. Let's keep it up for just a bit more. Yeah. When it gets right down to it, we're the same in that we don't cut corners on anything. It's not often that you're friends with someone who shares the same hardships as you. For just a bit more. But was that until we carried this box to the reference room, or until we were tired from our team and committee? They were my own words, but now that I think back on them, I'm not sure which I meant. We would both laughed at them too. One more thing we have in common. So the, okay, so I think the next one must be in August. So what I don't like about this system of the extra scenes is that you don't know, there's no, um, there's no like guiding tab. So when we go through the main story, there's always like a highlighted corner to show us where the next scene was. <laughs> And I guess because you can play the extra scenes in any order, 
they're not going to have the guiding tab, but because I'm going through each character all at once, I'd really like the guiding tab so I don't spend, like, minutes trying to find the next scene. But this one, this one was easy to find because it was a new scene altogether in a month, which had no more new scenes. Oh. I just... I love having these different character interactions, and I honestly don't know what to expect by th from this one, from uh, Miki and Aki, but we'll find out. It's hot. Above me was the striking summer sky and sun, so bright it dazzled the eyes. The sunlight practically shone through my head. Maybe I should have worn a hat. Oh, wait, this is... This is in August, right? I, I forget to keep track of the months. So is this summer camp time? Because we know... Miki wasn't, at, wasn't involved in the summer camp. Or maybe it's not summer camp time. We'll find out. I really, I should learn now to stop asking the questions and just keep playing because I usually get the answers eventually. The school isn't very strict about what we wear, so I probably wouldn't get in any trouble for it. But it's true that there aren't too many people here with one. But while I'm here at school during vacation, sometimes I think I should do that. Not that the sun seems to be affecting my helper. Aki-san of the disciplinary committee much. Well, at least when I'm watering the flowers, the spray from the nozzle keeps me nice and cool. Nearby, Aki stood with perfect posture, undaunted by the strong sunlight. She was talking to a girl who must be her friend. <laughs> friend. Now get to class. I won't allow you to be late. R right I'll work hard again today. Mm, do your best. They're kind of an odd pair. I never expected to see Aki-san, famous as the Morning Gate Guard. Oh, is that her proper name? I just thought everyone called her the Demon Gate Guard after, <laughs> after hearing it from Yoka. Waving someone off with such a bright smile on her face. Is the other girl in a music club? Her outfit's a bit more unique than most, even with our school's lax dress code. She seems opposite to Aki-san in every way. It's surprising to see the little smile Aki-san has on her face, too. It's a rare sight, but one that makes you feel blissful. I wonder who that girl is to have such a valuable smile directed her way. Who was that? Her name is Kobayoka. She's my friend, for now. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> please! I'm just- we're just gonna keep going. I'm gonna save my commentary. For now? Yes, she's pretty- no, quite interesting to me. I really enjoy watching her. Aki-san said with a face like she couldn't contain that amusement. That one's pretty rare, too. If she always looked like this, I think Aki-san would be much less intimidating and much more popular, though her position might still make it difficult. You seem like you're having fun, Aki-san. After seeing the strange pair in this rare side of Aki-san, I had to voice my thoughts. I wasn't expecting the response I got either. Yes, I am. You also seem the same way lately, Aihara Senpai. It was Maki-san, right? Is it because of her? Huh? H how does she know? And how much does she know? I panicked for a moment, thinking she might know about Maki-chan's confession and how she kissed me. Before I realized that we're always together when we work for the committee, it wouldn't be odd for her to have seen us working together. Well, yes, I suppose so. We've been hanging out a little over summer vacation. Oh, but I suppose I should be preparing for my entrance exams by now. I wonder if I'm slacking too much. 
No, I think it's very important to take breaks, and I can't imagine you're fooling around too much anyway, Ihara-senpai. You think so? And you do look like you're enjoying yourself when you're with her, senpai. If she can make you look that way, then I think it's only a good thing that you're spending time together. Of course, I couldn't tell her that we weren't just hanging out, but being vague about it got me a more ma mag a more magnanimous response than I was imagining. In the end, I was still a little unsure of how to respond. She's famous for being strict about time, but she says it's fine to be hanging out with underclassmen when you should be preparing for entrance exams. My impression of Aki-san was really changing today. By the way, what are you doing at school, Aki-san? Did the second years have some summer classes, too? I'm here with the disciplinary committee overseeing the remedial classes, and I'm helping Sono-sensei out, too. Sono-sensei? Yes, she is quite busy overseeing the camp and doing work for the school festival committee. Oh, I wonder if there's anything I can help with, too, then... The words came out as per my usual habit, maybe even by reflex, but Aki-san had a quick, firm response. I can't allow you to help, Ihara-senpai. You said you were only doing this watering today between summer classes, and in the place of someone who, su who suddenly couldn't make it. You have your exams to study for. It was absurd of them to ask you, and absurd of you to accept. Huh? But... She just said breaks were okay, even with exams coming up. Not that she's wrong, though. It wasn't like she directly asked me to do it. She just told me that she wouldn't be able to make it. I'd only gotten that one short text, and I was just doing this watering with the little break I had between classes. I'll help too, so let's get this over with. She said, running off to the storehouse to get another hose. This actually isn't the first time we've had an exchange like this. We've met a few times on joint meetings between our committees. Aki-san always seemed somehow concerned for me whenever we had to work on something together. She's helped me several times, while scolding me that I accept requests too easily. That isn't good for those asking the requests, either. I think she's probably right. The empty school and summer vacation seemed to reveal a new side of her. It felt a little refreshing. But I'm here just like usual, after accepting a request from someone. So I think Aki-san's probably right, but... I have to make the decision to change myself, don't I? I muttered quietly as Aki-san grew farther away waiting for her return. I wonder if she thinks my relationship with Maki-chan will spark some change in me. Is that why she brought up Maki-chan before? Aki probably sees right through this. Considering Aki is one of the characters who's actually very aware of her feelings and has been aware of being attracted to women her whole life probably sees right through this. Maybe she'd realized and pretended not to know or something? Maybe not. You wouldn't normally think that way about two girls, right? See, unless you're Aki, because for Aki this is normal, so. It's interesting, I wasn't really expecting to, uh, to see uh, Miki and Aki interact. They about acted with each other, the more or less what I expected. <laughs> Do they say that summer changes girls? The words were old-fashioned and probably meant something else, but I think there's some truth in them. Will I be able to change this summer? But Aki-san said I look that way. How exactly do I look when I'm with Maki-chan? Like that smile Aki-san had for Koba-san? I might be happy about that thought, just a little. And this is really nice too, because in the main story, 
we don't get a lot from Miki's perspective, so we don't really see what causes Miki to realize her feelings for, for Sena. Because for a while, it seems like she doesn't have really any strong feelings for Sena at all. Um, and so, yeah, these, these little extra scenes are really helping uh, explore her perspective, you know, what we didn't see. And, like, having these interactions with, like, the interaction with Aki, for instance, where she's kind of reflecting on on her relationship with Sena and how it compares to Aki's relationship with Yoka. I mean, you think about it, uh, Aki and Miki are very much opposites in personality, right? You know, Aki, uh, I mean, they're pretty... They're both pretty mature and self-aware, I think, but about different things. But Aki... Aki has... Aki is completely forward and decisive and she will she will stand her ground right and she will stand by her word and her feelings while Miki on the other hand is still kind of trying to juggle them and so she's kind of hiding stuff and uh so that was a cool interaction as my point oh good we get another um another hint to where the next extra scene is if you guys couldn't tell between the first Miki extra scene and the second extra scene, I cut because it took me like five minutes to find the next Miki scene. And I didn't think you all deserved to sit and watch me flip through everything a bunch of times. Oops. Days without you. Now, now we're in September, right? Again, you think I'd pay attention to the month before I click. Oh, yeah, end of September. Okay. Again, these, and you know, I have to say, for someone who always wants to keep the timeline in my head as I'm going through the extra scenes, what I've noticed is with a lot of them, they always begin with the character mentioning the time of year or the event that's going on that month, and that's really good writing, because then if you're like me and you're just like, up oh, here's the next scene, oh wait, what month is this, what happened, you get this little, this little hint. This little reminder, I should say, as October approached, you know, anyways. As October approached, the heat finally started to fade, the hallways after school losing their stuffy warmth. Yet, I was still stuck wondering how to wipe the sweat from my forehead. With both hands full, I couldn't get out, of my, get out my handkerchief, and the load was a bit too unwieldy to shift to just one arm. Maybe I should have just set it down for a moment. But it was so heavy, it'd been a fair bit of work just getting it here. I didn't want to risk not being able to pick it back up. I'd just have to bear with it and get it to the reference room. I quickened my pace a bit when... The next door in the hallway opened. Oh, Ihara-san! Thank you for all your hard work! I assume that's what you're doing now too? Sono-sensei emerged and, upon noticing my burden, scrunched her face up with some dissatisfaction. Okay, oh, oh, these, these make sense now. The interactions between Sukio and Miki. Because Sukio brings up lightening the load for Miki, talking to, other, to the other teachers about not putting so much work on her. You know with Yuna's uh, encouragement, because Yuna technically is the one who's like, hey, we need Miki to not work so hard so she can have private time with her lady friend, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then Tsukiya's like, oh, well, uh, I sh I've been meaning to talk to the teachers about that anyway. So this helps build up that kind of, that kind of part of, that, that kind of part of, I can speak very well, I promise. No, that, that builds up that, whole interaction and how Sukio's kind of, you know, been keeping tabs on Miki in a sense. It, it adds more depth to that conversation. Context to that conversation, I should say. Huh? Ah, uh, yes, but it's okay. This is for Nage-sensei, and I volunteered. Nage-sensei. She's at an age where she probably would have retired at a public school, so I volunteered to carry the materials for her thinking it would be best that she didn't do it herself. Ah, Nagai-sensei. 
I suppose there's no helping it then. I was worried people were pushing work onto you again. Not this time, and I'm turning down most small requests now. That's true. If it looks like my help isn't really needed, I won't accept the work anymore. Actually, there are a lot less people who come and ask me to do things now. Since that day, at least. Ah, that day. That day. That day Sena made a scene. Sono-sensei was aware of the event, of course, so she nodded in understanding. Ever since then, the mood of the people around me, or how they look at me, seems to have changed. <laughs> Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. They're scared. They are scared, Miki, because now they know that if they push you around or take advantage of you, Sena is gonna explode on them. Man, oh, Sena, gotta love her. Well, part of that's the school festival being over, I think. Maybe. I'm sorry about that, by the way. I should have realized that you were so busy before the festival. No, it's alright. I really am getting fewer requests lately, just... To tell the truth, now that I don't have as much to do... How should I say this? I feel like I have a little too much time to spare. Uh, I think I can understand that. <laughs> That's right, Those these two would have that in common, of like being overworked and biting off more than you can chew. And then, and then wasn't it Tsukio who talks about being like a workaholic makes her feel alive? Or something like that? I, I could have sworn that was a conversation she has with Yuna and Aki. And so... Yeah, these two are totally connect on that. <laughs> on that whole, like, I don't know what to do with my time. How do I do stuff for myself? Sensei smiled wryly with unspoken solidarity. Sono Sensei is the same sort of serious type, the type to take on all extras, so all sorts of extra work. It seems I wasn't the only one quite busy before the school festival. We have that in common, I suppose. Yes, I was feeling a little restless, though you've come at a good time, Sensei. I'm sorry, but could you hold this for a moment? Huh? Sure, of course. Was what I said that unexpected? Sensei looked a little puzzled, but still held my burden for me. I took the opportunity to pull my handkerchief out and wipe the sweat away that had been pestering me. Thank you, that's enough. Refreshed, I took the things back from Sono-sensei, who gave me a mystified look, then nodded to herself as if coming to some understanding. Yeah, you got me. You really have changed, Ihara-san. I'm a little impressed. That was very well done. Sono-sensei said to me after I finished taking those materials to the reference room. Did she really think so? I couldn't really tell yet myself, though I had heard the same thing from someone else, and it, would be, and it was because of that someone that I was changing like this. Imagine, imagining Sena's face and voice, I put my hand on the pocket of my blouse. She couldn't have known what was inside it, but Sono-sensei said, Three days suspension, huh? You must be lonely with Maki-san gone, Ihara-san. Yes, it's just for a little while, though. She'll be back tomorrow. I tried to be nonchalant, but I still felt a bit more bashful answering. I could feel warmth different than the lingering heat of the summer in my cheeks. And it's true that I haven't been able to see Sena at school. But we've been texting each other. She's been using her extra free time worrying about me. I wonder if I should tell her about the help I've done today. Those are the sorts of texts we exchanged. Still, I do want to see your face. I want to hear your voice. I want you by my side. Duh. Duh. Super cute. 
The sun was already low in the sky by the time I checked with the committee and returned to my classroom. It sets a little earlier now, making it seem like the long summer is finally ending. A signal that exams are approaching, and with them, many things to prepare for. By then, I was the only one still in the classroom. The empty classroom, lit by the setting sun, seemed strangely calming. I was a bit reluctant to part with it, but I needed to be getting home to study, too. I picked up my bag and touched my breast pocket again. I only started walking around with this four days ago, but it's already become a bit of a habit. Oh, do you keep the love letter in your pocket? I bet you that's what it is. Yeah, 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 knew it. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. Stop being so cute. <laughs> The letter that sparkled as if each character had been engraved in gold, shining like the sun with her heartfelt feelings. The shock I felt that day still hasn't faded. When I keep it close to me, think of it near me, I feel a warmth rising up beneath my skin. Sena, I spoke softly, as if to send my words to her through the letter itself. I'll have to leave the committee in October. Part of it is because of exams, but more than that, I just think it's time for me to end that period of my life. It'll be the first meeting in October, probably the 11th. When I whispered it out loud to Sena, to her letter, it finally started to seem real. That and other things. All sorts of things. Good things, bad things, everything together. That was how much of my school life I'd spent devoted to committee work. Now that it finally feels real, I think I can say this, Sena. Now that it's over, these last three years weren't bad. Not at all. No, they were good. Since, in this last one, I met you. So I think Yuna and Hina are pretty sweet. But uh, Miki just might have, just might have rotted the few, uh, the few healthy teeth I still have in my mouth. Yeah, that was that was pretty, that was pretty sickeningly sweet. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. That looks like it for Miki extra scenes, though. So next time, I think it makes sense. Just kind of like from Matsuri, following Matsuri, we went to Miu. I think it makes sense to go from me from Miki to go to uh, Sena's scenes, which I believe it's one of these, right? No, hi Yuna. No, hi Yoka. Nope. God, where is it? Sorry, you guys. I again, this is just it's super confusing to have like just to have like random I, I don't know where where is it this is ridiculous it's here isn't it no we just click that one anyways I'll find it on the next one <laughs> for those of you who haven't like tuned out of the video with me and the clicking we'll 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 start with we will go into Sena extra scenes next time, but I'm not going to waste any more, uh, any more of your time right now. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Take care.